but you really don't know what goes on inside these mill buildings in New Bedford unless you really go in. Brick facades and massive windows hide a world of possibilities in New Bedford. I mean, they're cold, they're chilly, but it's history, and we have a lot of history here. From housing to event space, retail to art studios, these former textile mills are full of activity and creativity. It's a nice spot to be in as an artist. And these were originally textile mills, and you can look at these buildings right here, this complex. This literally employed thousands of people right here on the spot. They're fantastic, but they're also fairly versatile. They can be used for just about anything except their original purpose as textile mills. In this city so connected to the water, Mayor John Mitchell says writing a new chapter for these buildings was also about what's happening outside. We try to double down on the things that we're really good at. And uh, for us, it's primarily uh, taking full advantage of everything having to do with the water. But there was something major in the way. New Bedford Hurricane Barrier is the largest levee on the East Coast. It was built in the wake of Hurricane Carroll, and it was meant to protect not only the population and the fishing fleet, but also these mills right here. So the idea was, all right, well, let's get people up, up there to see the water, and let's have something here that people can really cherish. With a lot of planning and the okay of the Army Corps of Engineers, New Bedford built this cove walk, as well as a similar harbor walk on the east side of the peninsula. So not only is it a great recreational amenity for the neighborhood, but it's become a bit of a tourist uh, destination. Head inside a mill for a store that's become a destination for those who live in New Bedford and those just visiting. We have customers come from all over, from New York, Long Island. They're going down to the Cape. People coming from the Cape, it's 30 seconds off of the highway. It's such an ideal location. Step brothers Owen Thatcher and Steve Szymanski run a Kushnet River Antiques. Their parents, Carl and Doreen Thatcher, opened the store in 1999, realizing Carl's dream. My father was an antique dealer for years. He was in multiple co-ops in the area and uh, he just wanted to do his own thing. 100 antique dealers sell everything from chandeliers to old biscuit boxes in this 18,000 square foot mill space. Well, I love old things to begin with. I, I naturally got that from my dad. I'm always seeing something new and I love to think about who had it before we had it. Longtime employee Maura Saltmarsh says her father worked in a mill like this and finds it encouraging that these buildings have found another other purpose. It was a cotton mill and they did clothing and the, the uh, employees lived in the little houses around here and one of our employees, her mother worked here. The majority of mills in New Bedford have been repurposed and that's the whole idea of our antique stores to repurpose and redo. Jeff Glassman knows about new purpose for these spaces. He transformed his father's clothing manufacturing business into one focused on fixing problems in garments made overseas. Chronicle visited Darnit in 2009. Glassman now also owns Hatch Street Studios. We have over 80 artists in the building and every artist does something different. And as you would imagine, every artist is creative in their own way. In Michael Pietragala's space, the scent of wood fills the room. He's been in this building since 2001, creating everything from custom furniture to hand-carved spoons. In another studio, color explodes from Alin Carlson's work. I paint large abstract landscapes, but I also pivot a lot. I work in paper. I teach classes in how to make large Italian crepe paper flowers. I think the thing that is the most important thing for me and for many artists is light. And that's what makes a huge difference in these mill spaces and that's why artists are attracted to it. Painter Heather Stuyvesen can't argue with that. The light is fantastic, there's no doubt about it. But there's something bigger that makes Hatch Street Studios such an important piece of her artistic life. As an artist, you work by yourself. And the idea of being around other artists is just so wonderful. There's this opportunity for feedback, people who understand what you're doing. You feel like a, a sense of belonging. I love coming in here in the morning because of that. So nice, and Hatch Street Studios opens to the public a few times a year. A date for their spring open house should be released soon. And back to Acushnet River Antiques, Owen Thatcher says that his father, Carl, was very particular and was 
very concerned that the merchandise they had in the store would be a certain way, a certain type of right. thing. So he vetted all dealers himself, and Owen and Steve and his sons have continued that practice. Up hmm. next, Art on the Rise in Framingham.